Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. Now two notes before we get going. Number one, even though this slide says statistics, this video is also applicable to finite mathematics. So you may be watching it in a finite math playlist in addition to a statistics one. But rest assured that these concepts apply to both fields of study. Number two, just keep in mind that these videos are geared towards individuals who are relatively new to stats and new to finite math for that matter. So I'll just be covering some of the basic ideas. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we will be discussing the concept of random variables. So in statistics, random variables help us understand how to visualize data, in some respects how to collect data, how to analyze data, how to build distributions of data, and things like that. Now in finite math, we often use random variables to talk about expected value and things of that nature. Even with that description, those things cross-pollinate. So you might see some aspects of the stats things that is listed in finite math and vice versa. That's really not important. The idea is that we're going to talk about random variables in this video at a basic level and then go into more detail in future videos. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So like with all my videos, I try to start out with a example or a thought experiment or something like that. And that's no different for this video. So here's where we're going to start. Now if I roll a die, like a die you would use in a game or something like that, this one, what are the possible outcomes I can get? Well, if you've ever seen a die, you know that it's six-sided. So it has the numbers one through six in dots on each side of the cube of the die. So what outcomes could I get if I roll it? Well, I could roll an exactly a one, exactly a two, exactly a three, a four, a five, or a six. So there are only six outcomes in this experiment, one through six. There are no in-between values, so I cannot roll a two and a half. Now, someone might say, well, the die could land on its edge. Well, if you'd like to spend the rest of your life throwing a die into a perfectly smooth box or surface to see if you can get it to land on its edge, by all means, go ahead and do that. But we're going to just assume that if we throw a die, we can get one of six outcomes, a one through six, with no in-betweens. Now our next thought. If I were to measure the average family income to the nearest cent for the state of Indiana, just for instance, then how many outcomes could I get? Well, see, this could be any value, a nearly infinite number of possibilities if we're talking about the average family income down to the nearest cent. So, for example, if we were to put all possible incomes ranging from $40,000 even up to $40,000.99 on a die, okay, that's just a $1 interval there, we would have to make the die 100-sided. We'd have a space on it for 40000 even. We'd have a space on it for $40,000.01. A space on it for $40,000.02. All the way up to $40,000.99. Okay? We would have to have a 100-sided die to be able to do that experiment. And it might look like this. Okay, you've probably seen this shape before. So we have a geodesic sphere. Every triangle on it is the same area, and we have a sphere. So it might look something like that. Now, what if we made it $40,000 even to $40,000.9.99? That's just a $10 interval. Well, in that case, our die would have to have 1,000 sides because there are so many cent intervals in there, we'd have to have a thousand sides to put all those different incomes on. Now what if we did a hundred dollar interval? Forty thousand dollars even up through forty thousand dollars, ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. We would need a ten thousand sided die. And it may look like that. The Epcot Center. 
So you can see that in this type of data, it's a lot different than our die we were throwing that just had six sides. Here, we're having so many possibilities that they basically become too numerous to even count. But in this case, eventually, the number of sides would become so numerous that our sphere, our die, would become a continuous curve, almost like a marble, because the differences between each cent interval in our average income are so small, you wouldn't be able to tell the sides apart anymore because there are so many. So I want you to think about this example versus the die that just has six sides. Very different. And when we talk about random variables in more depth, these two ideas will become centrally important. So what is a random variable anyway? I've done these two experiments with you, but we haven't even talked about what it is, which is sort of the way I teach. So what is it then? So a random variable is a variable that takes on numerical values as a result of some random experiment or measurement. So in our two examples, we had a throw of a die. So we could have the outcome of one, two, three, four, five, or six. In our average income, we could have almost infinite number of average incomes because there are so many. But each possibility is a numerical value. So a random variable associates a numerical value with each possible outcome. Okay, and it's very important. Random variables must be or must have numerical values. So I want you to keep two things separate in your mind. The random variable itself and the possible outcomes or values the random variable can take. In our die example, the random variable values could be one, two, three, four, five, or six. The random variable itself is sort of the throwing of the die. Okay, that's our experiment. Now, a random variable is usually denoted by the capital letter such as X. I don't think I've ever seen it anything else but X, but I will say usually. Now, the outcomes are denoted by lowercase letters, again, usually X. So for our die throw, our outcomes will be listed as X could either be 1, so it's the same way as saying our random variable outcome could be 1, our random variable outcome could be 2, x could be 3, 4, 5, or 6. So when I say the possible outcome could be, that's the same as saying x could be. Now I'm just going to touch on this very briefly because I'm going to do more videos about it, but I just want to mention a very important idea, and that is the difference between what we call discrete and continuous random variables. Now actually in my two examples I did them for you. The die throw is a discrete random variable and the average income is a continuous random variable. So we want to make an important distinction between, between the two because they have different roles in statistics and in finite math. So a discrete random variable has a finite number of values or an infinite sequence of values, like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And the differences between the outcomes are meaningful. So our die throw can only have an outcome of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So that's what we mean by a finite number of values. And each is meaningful. So throwing a 4 on a die is definitely different and meaningful than throwing a 1. Now as far as the infinite sequence goes, those sort of things are often used to say if I am like Citibank and I want to know how many people are arriving or standing in line at an ATM at any given time, well that could be anywhere from zero up to theoretically an infinite amount. Of course we're not going to have 10,000 people in the line at the ATM. Even though it seems like that sometimes, it's not realistic. However, theoretically, we could. So, but we can't have like 1.2 persons unless we have like a person and a leg. So that's what we mean by discrete random variable. A finite number of values, like the die, 
or an infinite sequence of values that are sort of like whole. So one, two, three, and so forth. Now a continuous random variable has a nearly infinite number of outcomes that cannot be easily counted. So remember when we tried to put our average income on a die that we could actually roll, well, the die became just massively full of sides. Even when we had like a hundred dollar span in an income, that's a 10,000 sided die. So it's really hard to count that many things, okay? So they cannot be easily counted. And the differences between the outcomes are not really that meaningful. And what I mean by that, let's say the average income, the difference between $40,000 even and forty thousand dollars and one cent is not really that meaningful and they are part of a huge number of possible outcomes for our average income okay that was just a primer on random variables so let's talk about what we're going to do next now in the next videos we will look at more closely at discrete and continuous random variables sort of in depth using several examples charts, um, tables, and so forth, and some real-world applications. So if you want to look at those, please tune in. And as always, again, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment or a thumbs up, or if it's a thumbs down, just give me a suggestion so I can make my videos better. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.